We are back on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk 1180 with your host Clay Kerner and I'm Marty Pay. And Marty, I'm really excited about the show we had today and I'm looking forward to having both these gentlemen come back in the future. Yes, we are. We should tell our listeners who the two guests are. Carlos Baldovinos, who's the new executive director of the Bakersfield Rescue Mission and Clay uh, Jeff Gowling with the Bridge Bible Church in the southwest Bakersfield. And uh, actually, you're from the Minnesota area, Carlos, and you're heading back up that way. Yeah, Minneapolis, and I'll be up there for a few days and just spending time with family. Well, I'd be willing to wager if the three of us went back up in that neck of the woods, we'd all be talking like the out and about uh, in a <laughs> short period of time. You betcha. Yeah. <laughs> now, something I noticed, Carlos, it, it, this was in the newspaper article about you, and I noticed it in the facility itself. It was talking about... Your two favorite words are determination and vision. Talk a little about that. Well, I am, uh, let's start with the vision part of things. Uh, for me, vision, when, when I came into the mission, I took, you know, the, 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 the role, you know, as executive director because I saw a lot of potential there. I saw that we could do more with the homeless population to help them better equip them so they could come out of this uh, thing called homeless and just being stuck in that rut I also seen the potential with the recovery programs because I know that works if you center Christ around that that's it works your recovery can can be successful and I've seen it you know in my prior mission that I worked at just you center Christ around it 10 times out of 10 it's gonna work mm -hmm. but the, the person has to be willing mm-hmm and what about the determination? <coughs> the determination. Factor? I am determined to make this mission to be one of the premier missions in the area. I really believe that. I, I know we have the facility to do so, to house more people, to get more people in recovery. I am determined to see that happen. And, and just, uh, again, I see the potential, the, the vision side of things goes along with the determination side of things. Mm -hmm. Do you see this as a... Uh as a place where people will come from out of the area to Bakersfield because you're doing such a great job? I believe it because I've seen it in other missions where people come out from other areas, for especially for the recovery program. I, I really believe if you're doing a first-class recovery program where there's people that are coming out and are becoming successful, that in turn creates people want what they want. The folks that want help, they're going to come looking for this. And folks that want to get involved will get involved because everybody wants a winner. Sure. Jeff, you were talking about the role the church has with an organization like uh, ba Bakersfield Rescue Mission, what you can do. Yeah, I'm excited as as uh, a church leader here in the city, you know, Carlos coming on and just getting to meet you today and, and hearing your heart. Uh, and I and I hope churches uh, are around the city do rally around you, Carlos, and your new leader leadership that you're bringing and the mission there. Um, and, and community leaders, I hope they come out too because this is awesome really what's happening and it, it is a great opportunity. I, I truly believe that this is what Jesus would be doing. Um, you know, a lot of us, I think, sometimes with the, the community that you reach, um, Carlos, you know, sometimes uh, they scare us a little bit. We're not sure how to handle it. Some of us might tend to be somewhat judgmental. Uh, boy, they got themselves into that situation. They should get themselves out of it, or they're just going to abuse any donation that we give them. Uh, you know, I think these would be some of the same things that some of the Pharisees in Jesus' time would be saying, and some of the church people, so to speak, the religious people back in Jesus' day. But what was Jesus doing? He was hanging out with the <coughs> prostitutes, with the sinners, with the worst of the worst. Um, that's who he came for. And... Uh, and he says, when you do it unto the least of these, then you do it unto me. I think not only should we as the church see ourselves as the hands of feet of Jesus, and feet of Jesus, but we should see in them the homeless, the hurting. We should see in them the face of God, the face of Jesus, and go and serve him in that way. Yeah, you talked, Jeff, about uh, somehow the way we look at some of these people. And I noticed now the Schwarzenegger has been releasing prisoners in the state of California, and we have a lot of prison population, I guess, being dropped off at the downtown um, bus station in the post office. I don't know if either of you are aware of that or if, Carlos, you're getting any of those people from the prisons. You know, uh, if I can jump in, I, I picked one up the other day. Um, he, uh, he had just got, God kind of led me, I guess, to him or led him to me, and, and I was with my family, and uh, we picked him up. And, uh, you know, learned that he just got out of prison. He was there because he killed somebody. 
and uh, boy, you should have seen the, my kid's eyes in the back seat got pretty big, you know. But but this man had met the Lord in prison, and I just got to encourage him and pray with him, and I felt like I had been with Jesus for a while. And uh, and these are exciting opportunities, I think. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about that, and, and I think that whole thing has been going on for, for a little while. I saw it up in uh, Visalia where, you know, they were l- releasing prisoners because of their overpopulation. And, uh, you know, just what we did up there, I'm gonna, I am gonna, I want to implement down here. We want to serve those people because they have nowhere to go. I'd I like to ask you both a question. It's a little bit different, but, you know, there's a lot of careers out there, a lot of opportunity out there in life. And I'd like to know why each of you chose, min- chose ministry. Um, well, I, I, I think I didn't choose it, but the Lord chose it for me. Um, I was kind of moving along in business. Like I said, I had an undergraduate in, in business, and I was going to get rich and, and uh, do well for myself in marketing and business. And, and, but, um, but God redirected me, and, and I feel pretty clearly called me into the ministry. And I can't imagine doing anything else, honestly. I have, I tell my people on a regular basis at church, I have the greatest job in the world. I can't believe that everybody doesn't decide to do this. Uh, I get to study God's Word and love people and get paid for it. <laughs> and only work one day a week, right? And only work on Sundays, which is great. And I just golf throughout the rest of the week, so it's a wonderful, <laughs> it's a great job. Carlos? Yeah, well, I'll just take you a little, you know, just take you back. I, I really was not when I was in high school, never really pursuing ministry or even Bible college or any ministry type position. And it's just interesting how the Lord used people in my life, such as my youth pastor, to guide me along into this. And even going into the first year of uh, Bible college, I said, well, you know, I think this will be enough because it'll, I think it'll be sufficient for my parents to know I did one year and I'm going to go into, you know, get a business degree. Well, that wasn't the case. I ended up graduating and uh, going into the youth ministry for a little while, then on to Billy Graham, and now at the rescue mission. So it, it's been a path that uh, the Lord has just guided through, not, again, never say never. God will use you and uh, mm-hmm. in mighty ways. So that's, you know, just why I did it. I just honestly just have the heart to uh, help people to see the lost come to know him. And uh, there, there's nothing else I would rather do than do this. We are visiting with Carlos Baldovinos from the Bakersfield Rescue Mission and Jeff Gowling from Bible... Bridge Bible. Bridge Bible Church, excuse me. You know, it's it's interesting. I, You were talking about, Jeff, a second ago about... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. About people uh, being judgmental sometimes. I I remember going through the campus on over the weekend and I kept on thinking to myself, there but the grace of God go I because you just never know what circumstance in life can turn a person one direction or another and next thing you know your life goes a entirely different way sure and 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 i think sometimes we have uh, a misguided uh, way of thinking about God's blessing sometimes. Sometimes we think like we have a nice home and we have three nice cars and everything else and so God has truly blessed me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the primary way that God blesses an individual, um, I believe. And sometimes we can let our wealth and the American dream actually get in the way sure. of our pursuit of, of the Lord and really serving Him. And so sometimes I think being around those who are less fortunate uh, maybe gives us a more clear uh, vision of how God really really does bless people, and, and sometimes they're more content and more in love with God and more worshiping God with their lives than we are in our beautiful homes and cars. You know, we're running really short on time, and as we open the show, uh, Jeff uh, gave a little prayer for 2011, and before Marty closes the show, Carlos, I'm going to ask you to give us a little prayer for 2011. Be- before we do that, we have a minute left, and I do have one last question for you, okay? Okay. For Carlos. What can we do as a community? What can volunteers do to help the uh, call our call our mission office. Okay, um, that's the three two five zero eight six three number. Yeah, that's three two five zero eight six three three two five zero eight six three. And uh, come on down. We we want to show you the property. Once you come to our property, I am positive you're going to get involved in some way, shape, or form. Close us with, play, with prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for these uh, this men, Lord God, that have. Uh, uh, made this interview happen. We thank you for 2011 for this community, Lord, that more people are going to come to know you through your word. And we just thank you for every pastor 
that is in this community. We thank you for every leadership, Lord God, that is helping out, Lord God, in these great works that are going on here. We thank you for Bakersfield, Lord, that there's going to be a great just outpouring, Lord God, of your spirit, Lord God, this year. And we thank you for this year that it's going to be uh, just an incredible year. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity in your name. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Stay sober. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Jeff. That's it for now. Happy New Year on Kern Radio News Talk 1180.